Thethys, the third closest round moon to Saturn. It orbits it at 295,000 kilometers away from its center, which is quite a bit closer than the distance of the moon to Earth, which is about 385,000 kilometers. So from the surface of Thethys, Saturn would be dominating the sky. However, the rings of Saturn would be barely visible, nearly invisible directly actually, because the orbital inclination of Thethys relative to the equator of Saturn is one degree, meaning that Thethys is facing directly the very thin sides of Saturn's rings, which are at best only a few kilometers thick. Still, the impressive shadows that the rings cast on Saturn would be clearly visible at times from Thethys. It's also important to note that this low degree of inclination is quite typical for round moons in the solar system. Most of them orbit their objects around their equator. Thethys has a diameter of 1060 kilometers, meaning its surface area is 3.5 million kilometers square which is only 0.7% of the Earth's total surface area. Despite the Moon, Luna, having a diameter 3.3 times longer than that of Thethys, it is by a whopping 115 times more massive than Thethys. And the diameter of Earth is 12 times longer than that of Thethys, and the Earth is nearly 10,000 times more massive than Thethys. Such a low mass means that its surface gravity is about 0.15 meters per second square. So the Earth's gravity of 9.8 meters per second square is about 65 times stronger. Such a difference means that dropping an object 100 meters away from the surface of Thethys would take the object about 37 seconds to land, while on Earth dropping an object from the same height would take the object 4.5 seconds to land. On top of that, if you were suddenly dropped from that height of 100 meters on Tethys and you reached the ground, you would land rather softly. It wouldn't crush you at all. In fact, the impact that you would feel upon landing is similar to the impact that you can feel while falling and landing on Earth from a height of half a meter. This is not an exceptionally large round moon. In the solar system, Tethys is the 16th largest by volume. Tethys also has the lowest density out of all of the known round moons in the solar system. Its density of 0.98 grams per centimeter cubic is almost exactly the same as that of liquid water, which is 1 gram per centimeter cubic, and it is nearly the same as that of water ice, which is 0.91 grams per centimeter cubic. Since the densities match so closely, that means that this moon is nearly purely water ice. Now, having a water ice rich composition is not that out of the ordinary. Pretty much all of the round moons of Saturn are at least 50% water ice. Also, all of the round moons of Uranus are at least 50% water ice. From Saturn and beyond, water ice is incredibly abundant in the bulk composition of the celestial objects. However, no known round moons and objects in the solar system are quite as pure as Tethys is in terms of water ice. And the mechanism behind how it got such a water ice rich composition is not known. As expected from having so much water ice, its surface is also extremely reflective, one of the most reflective in the solar system most of the light that hits it is reflected back. Another reason that it is so reflective is also related to water ice, and that is that it is right next to Enceladus, which is constantly spewing water from its geysers, thus creating the second outermost ring of Saturn, the E-ring, that is rather faint but very long, stretching for hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Now since Thethys is right next to Enceladus, its surface is constantly bombarded by relatively fresh water ice particles, meaning that the surface doesn't get dark from accumulating dark material. At their closest, between Enceladus and Thethys, there is a distance of about 55,000 kilometers, 
which means that, during that time, in their orbit, Enceladus from the surface of Tethys appears to be about as large as the Moon does from Earth. Now since Tethys is orbiting Saturn, that means that it is about 10 times further away from the Sun than the Earth is, which means that it is receiving about a hundred times less sunlight than the Earth. That on top of the fact that it is reflecting the vast majority of the light that it gets makes its surface temperature about minus 187 degrees Celsius. At such a low temperature, the water ice on its surface is acting more like a rock. The lower the temperature, the harder the water gets. Now, the surface of Tethys is not equally reflective all throughout. There is a large part of the surface that is much less reflective and has a yellowish hue to it. And the interesting part is that this is also true for two other neighboring round moons, Dione and Rhea. They also on their surfaces possess a single large patch that reflects light much less compared to the rest of their surface. And the reason that they and Tethys do is most likely the exact same one. So Tethys is tidally locked, meaning that one side of it always faces Saturn. That is because its rotation around its axis is 1.9 days, which is the exact same amount of time that it needs to complete an orbit around Saturn. That causes one side of Tethys to be always facing Saturn, making Saturn appear fixed in the sky from that side. Tethys also presents on its surface other colors, like red. And what I am referring to is the thin red lines that can be seen clearly near the dim region once the colors are enhanced. They are a few hundreds of kilometers long and a kilometer or so wide. One idea of how these red arc lines appeared is that they are an outgassing from below the surface. It's possible that there are vents in those red lines that allowed for the material to reach the surface. However, we don't know if they are there, as the resolution of the image is such that it covers about 500 meters per pixel. So vent fractures that are a few tens of meters in size are not registered. Considering that the E-ring particles erase coloration rather quickly in terms of geological time, that also suggests that these red arcs are a new or a renewed feature. The red arcs also suggest that Tethys is not entirely geologically dead. However, looking at the crater density, it still is obviously geologically mostly dead. And the last coloration anomaly of Tethys is the bluish band on the leading hemisphere around the equator. It's actually quite massive. The cause for this bluish band is said to be a bombardment of very energetic electrons onto the leading hemisphere. The electrons, it is said, are from Saturn's magnetosphere. The same bluish band is also present on Mimas for likely the exact same reason. Mimas is the closest and the smallest round moon of Saturn. And the most dominating feature of Tethys is a crater, the Odysseus crater that is 450 kilometers in diameter. It is longer than the diameter of Mimas. Relative to the body that it is on, it is the largest crater in the solar system. The floor of the crater is about 3 kilometers below the mean radius of Tethys. The rim of the crater, however, can be up to 5 kilometers above the mean radius. So the difference between the floor of the crater and the crest of the crater is about 8 kilometers. That is around the height of Mount Everest, the highest above the sea level mountain on Earth. This crater also surprisingly doesn't have a central peak that is somewhat typical for craters, indicating that it likely eroded over time. Instead in the center is a depression, and around it is a mountain range 3 kilometers above the floor of the crater. Now the size of this crater suggests an incredibly powerful impact, so a greater depth is expected. Now, it also bends well to the spherical shape of Tethys, suggesting that over many millions, possibly billions of years, through gravity, the icy crust shallowed the crater out and bent it to the spherical shape of Tethys. 
There are also traces of this crater beyond the exact impact site that are a result of the powerful impact. There are some channel-like features that point away from the crater, and this band of elevation and surface height right here is quite possibly a result of the shockwave that created the Odysseus crater. Tethys is saturated with craters, and it has the occasional valley. They are really the only two recurring geological features that it has. Now besides Odysseus, which is certainly exceptional, there are other large craters on Tethys, such as Melanthius. It is 250 kilometers in diameter and has quite a few tall central peaks. Then there is Penelope, a crater on the trailing hemisphere. It is about 200 kilometers wide and it is oddly shaped. It's an oval, egg shape. Considering its crater density, it also possibly was there during most of Tethys' history. Another significant feature of Tethys is the enormous valley named Ithaca Chasma. It is about 3 kilometers deep and 2,000 kilometers long, so its length is double the diameter of Tethys. At times, it can be up to 100 kilometers wide. Possibly it formed through the water ocean beneath the surface freezing. When liquid water freezes, it expands in volume. The expansion beneath the surface therefore cracks the surface above it. And yes, that means that possibly in the past, Tethys had a liquid water ocean beneath its icy crust. Another suggestion is that the valley formed as an impact ring from the Odysseus crater. But considering the impact crater density, which is used to estimate the age of geological features, it suggests that Ithaca Chasma is likely older than the Odysseus crater, therefore making the suggestion unlikely to be true. Now the process that created Ithaca Chasma was seemingly powerful enough to erode away most of the crater that was previously present there, called Telemus. From what is left of it, it can be seen that it is about 320 kilometers in diameter, making it the second largest on Tethys. And that is the overview of Tethys, the least dense known round moon in the solar system. Although it is not the most exciting place in the solar system when compared to something like Titan, the data gathered about it still shows that it has plenty of interesting things and some mysteries left to be uncovered. <laughs>